The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of pup talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks, go. Okay, okay. Trade deadline week. All this talk about how, you know, we got to get Jake Gensel. Well, guess what? Maybe the Canucks don't need to get Jake Gensel because they already have Jake Gensel on their team, baby. Jake Gensel 2.0. More on that next here on Locked Up Canucks. Boom, bam. Your Locked On Canucks. Your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, Canucks writer for Daily Hive and also your co-host here on Locked On Canucks. Before we dive into today's episode, we got to thank you for tuning in to Locked On Canucks because it is your team every day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go subscribe or follow us for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. I also got to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download that Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get it up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Well, you know, once upon a time, people were sleeping on Jake Gensel, and then he, you know, kind of came out of nowhere from Nebraska and tore up the NHL. Now, wow. uh, with Nils Hoaglander, I think he caught some people at surprise this season as well. Uh, spent most of last season in the AHL, mm-hmm. and now it's one of the best even strength goal scorers in the NHL. So the question today, can Nils Hoaglander be the next Jake Gensel? Let's get into it. We'll also talk about Vasily Pod Colson, his debut and his value on the trade market. And also we'll touch a little bit on Carson Soucy, uh, who was close to a return to the lineup. Uh, speaking of a return to the lineup, you know, Kyle Bowen, you're always here, buddy. I'm just the part-timer here on Lockdown Canucks. So let me introduce my co-host who does the most, Kyle Bowen. What's going on, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, another conversation about your Vancouver Canucks. And today we're, we're showing love, man. And we're showing a bit of desperation in the fact that uh, we don't want this guy to go. And we know. Yes, we know. If the Canucks want to go big fish hunting, it's going to take Niels Hoaglander. Pod Colson, not a lot of value. Atu Ratu, not a lot of value. Oh, you don't want to get rid of Willander and Wakaramaki? Okay, <laughs> I want Niels Hoaglander. It's just the truth. And I don't want that to happen. Uh, but what I do want to happen is for you to sign up to the Discord, okay? Why? Because it's a conversation that's constantly happening, okay? And we talk about the Canucks. We talk about books. Right now, the book club is going off. Hey, man, oh, man, if you sign up for the Discord, you enter for a chance to win two tickets. Yes, two tickets to the Kings game on March the 25th. Again, link is in the bio. Uh, We talk a lot there. Uh, Just a place for Canucks fans to get together, you know, and talk a lot about everything. So we can, again, gain that chemistry for that live show, okay? $5 beers, $1.25 hot dogs, okay? I'm going to buy the same hot dogs from Costco. And, Trevor, you're going to be grilling them for the people, okay, for $1.25. twenty-five. You can keep all the tips. Anyways, uh, no more hot dog talk. Let's talk about Hogs, okay? That guy, what a season so far. What a year. A guy who can clearly get better. And in my eyes, I haven't watched a ton of Jake Gensel play, but I feel as if they play kind of similarly, okay? Uh, They're hard to play against. They get open. They do well with good players. They do well throughout the lineup. Uh, There's a lot there. And again, I don't want Niels Hoaglander going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I think if the Canucks are going to make a trade um, and, and a trade for a guy like Gensel, they're going to have to give up you know, one of their big assets. And reports are that they don't want to give up Lekaramaki and they don't want to give up Willander and they probably don't want to trade another first round pick. Mm-hmm. That being said, I think, you know, I, I thought about this a little bit this morning, but do the Canucks, if, does Pittsburgh really want the Canucks 2025 20, first rounder? I mean, they still have Crosby and Malkin. You had this talk about how, now they want more prospects instead of picks. That makes sense, right? They're trying to accelerate mm-hmm. the timeline a bit. Mm-hmm. Hoaglander helps with that. Um, and again, if they're not going to trade Willander or um, like Gary Mackey, it's got to be those Hoaglander. Now, I'm open to that, but there is an mm-hmm. argument that this guy could be the next Jake Gensel. You got to squint a bit, but um, <laughs> you know, one of the interesting things about Gensel is that when he broke into the NHL, he was already 24 years old. Whoa. Um, Nils Hoaglander isn't even, he's 23 years old right now, right? He's not even mm. 24 until next season, December mm-hmm. of next season. So that's one interesting thing to look at between the two players. Um, Kyle, I'm kind of curious in your eyes, what other similarities do you see between Gensel and Hoaglander? And, and is this at all a realistic comparison? Again, like 
I feel like I feel like they're the, kind of like the same size too, the same stature. Again, hard to play against, man. That's that's the thing. You know, you you kind of look at players like get Jake Gensel, obviously a level above a guy like Zach Hyman, but you you want those guys, you know? You want those guys who are doing the most, but they are they're highly skilled enough to be efficient, to be effective, to be top line players. And I think there's very few players like that across the league. Straight up to be honest, I feel like there's seven or eight of those guys. And Hoaglander is definitely on pace to be one of those guys. And uh, one of the things that we haven't seen consistently a lot from Niels Hoaglander is the high-end skill and the high-end flash because he's so busy doing a lot of other things, right? He's just doing those things. But if you look back to his his junior years, his draft year and whatnot, bro, this guy was putting on a show. And I think that's where I see a bit of that Jake, Gen- Jake Gensel-esque type numbers, type efficiency down the road, okay? Look at Jake Gensel. He has a couple 40-goal seasons, a couple 30-goal seasons, I believe, a bunch of 20-goal seasons. That's kind of how I see Niels Hoaglander's career kind of going. Like, once in a while, he's going to be hitting. Hitting. You know how, like, Kuzmanko scored 39 goals last year? If Hoaglander plays a full season with Elias Pettersson, you can kind of see numbers like that happen. And it's about, again, being effective and being someone who's a, a nuisance to play against. And Hoaglander's that guy. He's a bit of an outlier. Yeah, again, both guys are are small but shifty. And I think Hoagland has definitely got more of that, you know, fire hydrant, pesky nature to his game, whereas mm. oh, Gensel yeah. to me is more of a more of a playmaker, right? And again, this isn't a perfect comparison, but I think one interesting thing about both these players is you know, they're pretty efficient when it comes to shooting the puck. And mm. we see it with Hoagland this season. Hoaglander even strength again, 19 even strength goals, um, top 10 in the NHL. At even strength, he's shooting 21 and a half percent, right? If you look at Gensel's first season, though, and again, a season where he was older than Nils Hoaglander, he posted very similar numbers. Uh, Gensel shot 21% as a rookie in Pittsburgh, uh, what, good for 1.6 goals per 60, whereas Hoaglander has 1.7 goals per 60 this season. Um, but again, to me, one of the biggest differences in their game is that Gensel, even from his rookie season, showed that he was a good playmaker in this game. You know, Gensel had almost a full assist, uh, a full primary assist per 60 minutes as a rookie, something that a pace he's kept out throughout his whole career, whereas Hoaglander has never really been a playmaker. And we've seen it this season. What does he have? 19 goals and was it six or seven assists? Eight assists, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, So to me, that's one of the big differences between the players is Hoaglander is um, stockier, uh, harder to knock off the puck than Gensel is, whereas Gensel's shiftier and a better playmaker. But Mm -hmm. I think both guys, the similarities they have is that they were, they're undersized and they were undervalued for that in their draft year. Uh, and even as prospects in general, right? Yeah. Um, both have come to the NHL and been more impressive than you thought they might have been when they were just prospects. Dude, and one love to Niels Hoaglander for just improving, man. To uh, Like, he's a true professional. You want guys like that on your team because his trajectory to being a full-time NHL was kind of off because he was there. He was a full-time NHLer, and then he wasn't, and then he wasn't again, and then he was a full-time NHLer. And then this season, he had to really bring it in. Again, his professionalism was on full display going into training camp. He was one of the guys that Rick Tockett showed a lot of love for. And another thing about Hoaglander and his playmaking ability, I think that the lack of it when it comes to passing or just chemistry amongst other line mates is or has a lot to do with the fact that he just bounced around the whole lineup and he hasn't really found a long runway with elite skill around him and i hope that for the next 20 games the next 19 games he's just there with patterson because i think well it's obvious man come on we're, we're in game 61 and we're st- we still got mikhaev and pew Suter in our top six and we also still have patterson not having that one-two punch with anyone and it's not there yet with hoaglander but i feel as if it can get there but it's going to take more reps yeah and, and the other thing too, I'm curious about is is again the age, right? Like Gensel came in here as as a 24 year old cracking into the NHL, and you know he was amazing uh, when Pittsburgh won their second cup. You know, 13 goals in 25 playoff games. Holy, um, that's but the struggled right a bit. There. Yeah, exactly, that's right. And, and again, Jake Gensel ha- is you know top 10 all time in terms of playoff goals scored. I think there's Ooh. a stat that in terms of players who don't have it in front of me, in terms of players who have played at least 50 playoff games. I think he's like sixth all time. And that eliminates like dry settled McDavid and, you know, some guy from the 1920s. Um, mm-hmm. But really it's like your Gretzky and Mario. Oh, like he's up there with some elite, elite company in terms of his goal scoring uh, in the NHL postseason. And 
you know, when I look at Nils Hoaglander, like that's maybe where a legend can be born a bit too, right? Will we get yeah. to see that? I mean, yeah. I imagine this guy stays with the Canucks past the deadline unless he's included in a Gensel deal. Um, but I think the playoffs is somewhere where Nils Hoaglander could make a huge impact, right? Yes. Uh, again, Bro. we're going to start talking more about the playoffs because they're they're yeah. on the horizon here. But yeah. you know, with the way Hoaglander plays and his tenacity, like he's a guy who you could see having a Gensel-like impact in the postseason. A hundred percent. And and again, I'm not going to call Gensel smart, uh, soft, right? Or softer than Hoaglander because I feel like he does have a little bit of edge. I feel as if I've seen some NHL mic'd up scenarios where this guy's just chirping a lot, okay? There's a lot of uh, tenacity in his game too, but we've seen it loud and clear from Hoaglander this season. He is a pest. He can lay the boom. One of the hardest hits of the NHL season this season was the one that he laid on Tanev. And in Tanev, yeah. Straight up. <laughs> and all in all, man, the Vancouver Canucks, another reason why you want – this power play of the Vancouver Canucks to take it up another notch is because of guys like Pedersen and Hoaglander drawing a ton of penalties. I guarantee Hoaglander's up there amongst the team leaders and penalties draw, drawn or even just brouhaha is drawn, okay? He's always causing attention. He always seems to be hated by the other team. And we talked about a guy like Liam O'Brien, right? The Vancouver Canucks should go after that fourth liner from the Coyotes. Yo, Hoaglander has a little bit of that FU in him. And uh, that's a beautiful thing, man. And it may equate and it has to equate to playoff success. Uh, you know, Trevor, yesterday you were talking about, you know, if the, if the Vancouver Canucks do trade uh, for Jake Gensel, I'm okay with them giving up Niels Hoaglander. Like, you pretty much said that, and I've even heard guys like Sat say that too, and I get it, right? You're talking about a top 10 playoff score of all time. Like, Jake Gensel's not, he's not like, he's not, uh, like, what, what am I trying to say? He's not, uh, what's that player? From the, from the island. He's not Kyle Palmieri, okay? You're not getting that type of winger, okay? You get what I'm saying? Like, He's a he's like yeah. a couple tiers above some other top six wingers. He's he's elite in his own way as a playoff scorer. I I get why you would not be so reluctant in making a swap like that because Dubis is gonna want Niels Hoaglander. Uh, that being said, at one point one million dollars, man, for a guy that again you want the Canucks to be good for a long time, I can't imagine what this guy does on a contract year next year. And if you want to talk about the whole contract year thing, like, yo, that kind of bleeds into the playoffs of this year, too. Like, he can start building his legacy for something grand for himself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let, let, let's go to the comments before you comment on that, because uh, look at this one. It just came in, okay, from Mark. Uh, Hoglander needs to stay, okay? Straight up. Uh, look at this. Playing in the NHL and being Big Hog with the Big Hog is the most – oh, never mind. Let's not read that comment. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Look, look at Popeye, dude. Look at Popeye. If, if they trade Hoglander – I am done with the Canucks. Yo, Hoaglander quickly turning into a, a, a team favorite here because yeah. of how well he's done this season. But I think people, again, we got smart hockey fans here. They're watching every game. They're watching every shift. They know the potential is mysterious, okay, and powerful with Niels Hoaglander. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to run Hoaglander out of town by any means. But, you know, if you want Gensel here, you got to give up someone good and Hoaglander. Mm -hmm. It's probably gonna be that guy if we'll end the care Mac here in the conversation here. But yeah, um, you know, I I got no problem with the Canucks keeping hook no, under as well. I'd love to see what he could do in the playoffs for your Canucks. Okay, well, what's going on, buddy? No, I, I was thinking because you're probably the same height as Niels Hoaglander. You kind of look like Niels Hoaglander too. Can everyone just look at Trevor Beggs and then look at Niels Hoaglander? They kind of look alike. Dude, why don't you have quads like this guy? You know, why aren't you working out? Why aren't you going hard in the paint? Okay, why don't why don't you be tough to play against the corners, man? Come on, man. You should be dreaming I'll, to be like Niels Hoaglander. You I'll, do I'll, let you know like can, I'll let you know if I can have a Hoaglander like impact when I uh, resume my ball hockey career next month. Oh. But uh, more, more, more on that, more on that in a month oh. and now. Uh, and uh, on the other side, more on another prospect from that 2019 draft, Vasily Podkolzin. He made his debut against the Anaheim Ducks over the weekend. We didn't talk much about this. We'll touch on that, but I also want to get into more. So, what's his value? What's his trajectory? Where is he going to slot into this Canucks team? And if you're going to trade him, what kind of value does he have? We'll touch on that and more on the other side. Before we do that, though, let's shout out our friends at Sleeper. All right, Canucks fans, we're getting into the stretch drive. And hey, we might not be the best team in the NHL anymore, but we're going to finish as the best team in the NHL in June, okay? Let's go, baby. Hey, regardless of where the Canucks are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fancy hockey on Sleeper the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is my number one choice for daily fantasy sports, and especially daily fantasy hockey, baby, because with Sleeper, you could win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Jake Gensel 
Whoa. Elias Lindholm or okay. Niels Hoaglander will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Canucks fans. You could win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Lockdown NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See sleepers, terms of use for details and locational availability. We back, we back on this conversation about your Vancouver Canucks called Locked On Canucks. One love to the Don't Those Art Lab. For making this possible, you know, providing the space, providing the production, uh, providing the uh, the freedom to do this, okay? They are home with the West Coast Bias, and they've been doing that for years and years and years. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing it for tomorrows and tomorrows and tomorrows to come. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. It really does help us out a lot. And you can help yourself out a lot by, you know, joining the extra part of the conversation. And that, that's in the Discord link below, okay? Again, uh, more Canucks talk, more life talk there amongst Canucks fans. And also, you get a chance to win two Canucks tickets. Two Canucks tickets, March 25th against the LA Kings. All you got to do is join the Discord, okay? It's a fun time. Uh, we got the game day thread up and, uh, you know, just want to find a way. Again, there's a voice feature on Discord. If you guys want to chime in, do so, and let's bring your voices to the show. Now let's, uh, let's you know, make that bridge, okay? Anyways, Trevor, you want to talk about Pod Colson? Uh, you brought up the fact that uh, you want to question uh, what his value is. Come on, dude. The value's not that high. Let's be real. There's a big reason why we're talking about Niels Hoaglander uh, on trade deadline week. It's because he's the only guy that kind of pushes the needle because of the fact that Canucks don't have a first-round pick this year and uh, they don't want to trade LeCaramacki and Willander. But yeah, Pat Colson, he doesn't have a long runway here to uh, improve his trade value. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't think Pod Colson will be included in a deal for a guy like Gensel, but I do wonder about you know some of the smaller fish out there, maybe a Tyler Toffoli, for instance. No. Even with the Vasily Pod Colson trade, I think the Canucks are um, aware of the fact that you know they can't just keep dishing up prospects and picks out the door for rentals, right? That's why you know, we've heard reports that you know whoever they do acquire, they probably want to sign to an extension or have that player have some term already. Now, uh, maybe we'll touch on Tyler Toffoli later in the week if he doesn't move because I, I I am intrigued by the fit with Tyler Toffoli, but mm-hmm. you know to Pod Colson in general, I think he has value just based on his draft cachet, and he plays a physical, you know, bang and crash brand of hockey that, again, you see less and less of nowadays. It's still obviously prevalent, but uh, there's less of it going on. Um, I did love what I saw out of Pod Coles in, in the Canucks' first game, uh, get, or his first NHL game this season against the Ducks. Like, a couple of really good defensive breakups, just desperation on the puck. You know, he was playing yeah. like he was fighting for his yeah. life in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, though, like... I've watched a you know a fair chunk of Abzer Canucks games this season. I haven't. I've been hot and cold from what I've seen from Bob Colson down there. You know he's producing at you know point seven five points per game, so you know three points every four games. You know there's there's times with Bob Colson in the AHL where he's got that bold and shot of try to shot mentality. He's playing hard off the rush. He's banging and crashing, but there's times where he just makes bad decisions with the puck too. So mm-hmm. I haven't been overly convinced of this game this season. So Kyle, I'll throw it back to you. I think you've been higher than Pod Colson than me throughout the time that we've done this podcast. But, you know, where's your head out, out, out on Vasily Pod Coles? And, and, and do you think he can make an impact with the Canucks, whether this season or next? I've had a crazy relationship with Pod Coles, and, you know, straight up. I've had a tough time saying his name, and then I was high on him after his rookie season. Awesome. And then, you know, just kind of confused on how he took a step back. And then going into this season, he had a horrible, horrible training camp. Horrible preseason. The most invisible Canuck player out there. And it wasn't as if I was ready to ship him out of town, but it was very disappointing to see this guy not be able to beat out, beat out a guy like PDG. Because look at where the Canucks drafted him. Look at, at where they drafted him. They need this guy to work out. Okay, straight up. They do. Now, going to that game against the Ducks, I think you brought it up. He played, quote-unquote, reckless. Rick Tockett wants this guy to play reckless. A.K.A., I think he wants him to play instinctively and not be in his own head. That's when he can tap into being fluid and play amongst his skill set and just kind of dominate when he's on the ice. And we did not see that from a guy like Archie Baines. When he was when he was up, yeah, he played a good game in Colorado, but post-Colorado, I feel like Archie Baines was scared to do anything extra. 
scared to be fluid, scared to rely on his instincts. Okay. He played like a rookie. Right now, they don't need Pod Colson to play like that. They need Pod Colson to play like he's been there before. He knows what he's doing and he's going to make an impact. And against the Ducks, obviously, that was, I'm going to say, easy for him to do. Why? Because you're surrounded by NHLers and you're playing an AHL team pretty much. Uh, the big test is tonight, the LA Kings. This is a huge test for Pod Colson. And, you know, you bring up T- to Foley and uh, who who else could they get for this guy? You know, you're looking at like a pot coals in a third round pick for Tyler to Foley pot coals in a third round pick for somebody, right? Somebody that they can squeeze into the top six. How about pot coals just step up and be untradeable for good reasons, because you need a guy like that on your team. Now, Connor Garland kind of brought up the fact that pot coals and reminded him of Dakota Joshua. I think that's a good template. That's a good place to start. You know, you look at his draft pedigree and where pot coals started I don't want to say it's easy to play like Dakota Joshua, but that could be a good example. And then if he can just find his way to be a consistent NHLer playing like that, being smart, playing big, playing with some skill, being confident, because Dakota Joshua, that, guy's, that guy was playing confident. Like, he was playing like an elite third liner. If he can do that, Pot Colson can, then he can learn from the likes of a guy like JT Miller. Because if you look at the comparables, as you brought up so many times in the past, like, they've had kind of like, like, Pot Colson is on pace to have like a really – quote unquote, rough start to his NHL career. But that doesn't mean it's over for this guy. That doesn't mean that this guy can't be a 60, 70 point guy. So again, if you can learn from Dakota Joshua, be there, can he kind of like then learn from a guy like JT Miller and other guys on the team? Let me ask you this, Kyle. If Pod Colson at his peak ended up being like a high end Dakota Joshua, you know, 20 goals, PK, you know, solid third liner, can maybe play for your lineup, would you be happy with that? At this point, yeah. At this point, yeah. Because again, September, I was kind of, I was, I was off the wagon, bro. I was off the wagon, okay. I was, dude. Straight up. Oh, look at look at this comment from Popeye, man. Speaking of being off the wagon, okay. Sorry, the Canucks are not going to make it past Game Five of the first round. They are not ready. Next year will be the year, bro. They can't really do that when they traded for. Uh, Elias Lindholm, okay, straight up. Uh, look at G. Ellis, okay? He would trade Lindholm or try to do so for Gensel. Okay, so there, there was a there was a report from Elliot Friedman today. Yeah. He talked about how uh, the Vancouver Canucks got one team interested in Lindholm. Is there any scenario where the Canucks bite the bullet, they take a lot less for Lindholm than Calgary did, and then use those assets to kind of re- make a quick fix? I don't think that's the case, but uh, Lindholm yeah, is playing yeah. that bad. Yeah, that would be almost unprecedented, right? And I think you don't want to sell a player at his low, uh, to be honest. I think, especially a guy you just acquired a month ago, like give him some time to fit in, okay? Yeah. Um, I think Elias Lindholm, uh, Elias Lindholm, I should say, has more to give. Um, hopefully he gets a shot back with Pedersen. I, I do not like him as a third-line center. Look, you have Bluger healthy, Suter healthy, Miller healthy. I, I know Rick Tarkett wants to do – what Vegas has done, he's references in the past, like have four lines and four centers who can go, but it's just not working with uh, with Elias Lindholm as your third line center. A lot of it with Elias Lindholm is not working, but I think the best chance to get the most out of him is to play him with star players. That's what worked in Calgary. That's probably what's going to work in Vancouver. So mm-hmm. just get him back on Pedersen's line. Um, yeah. And Hoagland is going right now too. Like maybe maybe Hoagland and Pedersen can get their fellow Swede going. I think that's the best way to, to utilize Elias Lindholm. For Pod Colson, we mentioned it in the summer how – you know, an intriguing spot for him would be alongside Miller and Bester. Now he's got to earn that opportunity. Kyle, any chance he gets a shot with Miller and Bester before the end of the season? And would you want to see it? Okay, well, it goes back to, I was about to cut you off when you're going on a ramble about the centers and the center depth and the blah, blah, blahs, right? Like, another reason why I don't think this team needs to use Lindholm down the middle is because Pew Suter can play center. And I think the yeah. Pew Suter experiment in the top six is becoming tiresome. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if he's suited to handle this much of a runway being a top six player, which isn't a bad thing because they're not paying this guy a lot. And he's a good NHLer and him being on the fourth line to me is sexy. Okay. That could really mm-hmm. work out for the mm-hmm. Vancouver Canucks. thus making uh, the, the route for Lindholm to be a top six guy easier. Now, Pod Colson with Besser and Miller again, I don't know, bro. Like bro, it's we're in game 62. JT Miller's your leading goal scorer, le- leading point score. I'm sorry. Brock Besser's your leading goal scorer. But we're here and we're really thinking about Pot Colson being that fix, being a fixture going into the playoffs. That is crazy. Now it goes back to this, though, okay? And one love to G. Ellis for the super sticker, okay? One love to that. Look at what he comments after, okay? 
He's waiting for Phil Kessel, bro. I, yo, you guys thought I was crazy, right? You guys thought I was crazy when I was like, yo, Phil Kessel is going to be a part of the All-American Express, okay? So screw the West Coast Express. Brock Besser, JT Miller, Phil Kessel, it's going to be a thing. And yo, if Kessel wants to prove a lot of people wrong, right? If he wants to, because I think there's a lot of people out there talking ish about him. Oh, he's 36 years old. 36 is a new 50, bro. 36 is a new 50. He can't do it anymore. Bro, you never know. Think about this. The guy's played a lot of hockey. He never misses any games. Now Phil Kessel had this huge break. Huge break and say what you want. I don't think he's he was just eating hot dogs the whole time, okay? Who knows? Maybe he wants to prove people wrong, a.k.a. his legs are rested too. That's that's another button. That's another button they're going to try. Dude, there's a lot of spots still left on this team, which is kind of crazy, you know, being it's game 61 and where the Canucks are in the lineup. But again, I don't think I'm crazy for saying that. Phil Castle is going to get a good leash or good good runway to be a top six player for your Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> Yeah, and and the quick update on Kessel is, you know, I'm not an I don't have the update, but he has to sign by the trade deadline. He right? will. He has to he sign to be eligible, eligible this week. So he will, dude. Kessel, if he's up... going to become a Canuck, and we all expect it's going to happen, it's got to happen, what, in the next 72 hours or so. So it, It's going to happen, uh, bro. It's going to happen. Phil Kessel is going to be a Vancouver Canuck, and the press conference is going to be longer than the one that Patterson had this weekend, okay? Uh, can't wait for that. We'll talk about that here on Lock Dog Canucks because it's your team every day, baby. We're going to wrap up the show on the other side, talk about Carson Susie, who, breaking news, is legitimately making his return to the lineup tonight against the LA Kings. So we'll touch on Ooh. Carson Susie on the other side. Before we do that, let's shout out eBay Motors. All right. Passion, drive, and patience. You know that's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from, for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, woo, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, baby. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your rust bucket into the MVP Whoa. and break home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions by eBay guaranteed fit, only available to US customers. Boom, bam, dude. Shout out to eBay Motors, man. Straight up. I can't wait to become an American so I can use eBay Motors for real. Okay, okay, we back on this conversation about your Vancouver Canucks, a team that's, you know, loaded with Carson Soucy. He's back. Uh, what's the record with Carson Soucy in the lineup again? Is it like a 16-3-2 so or something? It's 16-3-2, and two, but uh, Jeff oh Patterson actually God. pointed out that the Canucks lost their first two games that Soucy was in the lineup. Since then, they are 16-1-2 and two with Carson Soucy in the lineup. Yeah, so well, there you go, man. What's going to be the record with Phil Kessel in the lineup? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know, man. Phil, it's gonna happen, going to happen, bro. Going 60 to 0 in the playoffs with Kessel. Okay, before we get to Carson Susie, let's before, go. Before we get to Carson Susie, look at Mr. Whale. Okay, Phil Kessel will only be a Canuck on Friday if the Canucks cannot get another top six guy. I don't believe that. I think he's already a Vancouver Canuck. They have a handshake agreement. He's a future Hall of Famer. They're going to do him right. Okay, they're going to treat him right. This guy lived in Abbots for, for a month plus. So you think they're going to be like, oh, never mind. No, sorry. We're not. Dude, it's already agreed upon. I think it's, I think they can't sign him based on like, salary cap reasons or something, you know, and they're just waiting to the last minute to like rinse it out completely. Okay. He's a Vancouver Canuck. And honestly speaking, there's only two games left before the deadline. Unless somebody like a Pew Suter, Elian McKay, Pot Coles, and somebody really, really steps up here. It's going to happen. Phil Kessel is going to be a top line player for your Vancouver Canucks. And yo, again, before we get to Susie, isn't it like remarkable how this team has gotten here with out like, Full on chemistry five on five without their top six. I know we were complaining about it a lot from like game 40 to game 60. Now we're still in game 61. Two minutes ago, Trevor Beggs is like, yo, I think Pot Colson's a top line winner for the Vancouver Canucks. Like, yo, is it? Oh dude, what's going on? <laughs> oh, you're hilarious, man. I, I just asked you if you could play with Miller and Bester because I like the fit. Yeah. Anyways, um, Phil Kessel, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think it's going to happen just based on the fact that I don't think they're going to dick around a Hall of Famer like that. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I actually wonder what number he wore in Vancouver. That's like a low key thing on my mind because 
He's worn either 81 or he's worn eight. Uh, but both yeah. those numbers are taken up in Vancouver. So I don't know what I Kessler's going to give him one. I think they should give him one. Give him one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why they like didn't, that's why they didn't retire Luongo's number yeah, because they stick. knew that they were going to sign Phil Kessel. That all makes oh, sense now. Lean into the meme, dude. Lean into the meme. And this team does need Phil Kessel, man. It's again, there's a lot. Again, they're, they kind of thrown their chips in, okay, this year. They, they've traded a lot of assets, okay? And they kind of need that, like, buffer they need they don't have the playoff experience so they kind of have to force the issue and again like phil kessel can't can do that okay anyways carson susie back in the lineup uh trevor Beggs wants to compare him to a guy like ian cole or just talk about the you know two signees from last offseason um i think a lot of us have talked a lot of ish about ian cole especially over the last 10 games because prior to that this guy was the perfect perfect number four number three and a half number four and a half type of defenseman uh, he's kind of wearing down how much does Carson Soucy help him? Uh, I don't know. Have a little bit less pressure going into a yeah. very, very important time for the Vancouver Canucks. I think it helps a ton. And Carson Soucy, I'm still curious to see him play in a more top four role and play against tougher mm -hmm. competition because that was the big critique before he came here is that he's excelled, but he's excelled against you know relatively weak competition. And Vancouver has been a similar role. He's it was kind of a third pairing guy with Myers as. You had Cole in the top four with even the guy like Mark Friedman while Susie was here. And I'm just curious to see more Susie because I think Ian Cole, I don't think has maybe been as bad as some people made it out to be. I think he's had made some mistakes, but I think overall he's had some good moments too. Mm -hmm. But true, true, true. We've seen that. We've seen that. You know, he's, he can't play 23 minutes tonight like it was early in the season, right? And yeah, I'm curious as Carson Susie gets eased back in who the true top yeah. four guy is. Now, you know, just looking at the athletics contract value, Ian Cole is around 4.2 million and Carson Susie's valued at like pretty much his contract valued at 3.3 million. So Cole has been more valuable based on metrics than Susie this season. And I think that's even more impressive based on the fact that Cole's played against tougher competition. So, um, but like you said, Susie, if, he, if he's not hampered by the injury should have fresher legs. Um, I'm just curious to see how these two are utilized on the stretch because um, I think Susie could be more valuable than Cole, but right now Cole is more valuable than Susie. Interestingly wow. enough, the two played on a pair together. <laughs> and oh, wow. I wonder if we might see that at some point, right? They yeah. played almost an entire year together oh, in on the same pair in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, dude. I remember that number. You you brought that up earlier in the season. Yo, like again, uh, Ian Cole. Uh, he's been uh, like, he's been solid. He's been playing above value. He's brought some like a big reason why the Canucks, for the most part, prior to recent struggles, has been so resilient is because of their leadership. And Ian Cole is a huge leader on that team, like a huge voice of reason. You can just tell he's brought a ton of value. I just think during the last two weeks, there's been a big magnifying glass on a lot of a lot of players on this team because they're not as sure. They're not as calm. They're not as perfect, quote unquote, like they were earlier in the season. And Ian Cole, when you do notice him and you notice him a lot, I don't think that's necessarily a good good thing. You know, he needs to play just a clean game, get the puck out, play a little physical, get off the ice. And it's just been a little bit more difficult for him to do so because the team itself just hasn't been as mentally sharp and structured in recent history. Now, Carson Soucy, man, it, it comes at a good time. Tyler Myers out for uh, quite some time, not long enough to go on LTIR. He will be back before the season is over. Uh, but this is a, bi a big opportunity. Like these next two games, I know it's crazy to say this because they probably already have their whiteboard out and they have their list of reasons and players that they want during trade deadline, but I, I feel as if, if Carson Soucy post injury in these games against the Kings and golden Knights plays extremely well, it might water down the temptation to blow the gasket for another defenseman. You know what I'm saying? Cause 16, one and two or whatever the record is over the last 19 games with Carson Soucy in the lineup. I don't think that's BS. I don't think that's lucky. I just think he's played over his value. He, he's reminded me of Chris Tanev straight up. Just a clean player, a smart player, a wise player, and I'm definitely excited to see him back in the lineup tonight against the Kings. Enjoy that game. Enjoy yourself. Again, the Discord, man. We have a game day thread. I'll put the link in the bio. We talk a lot of trash. But we're allowed to use some swear words in there, okay? We have a lot of fun. Uh, join us again in the Discord. We're playing the Kings tonight. We're also playing the Kings on March the 25th. And if you enter the Discord, you get a chance to win tickets to that game on March the 25th at Rogers Arena. Uh, Carson Susi again back in the lineup. Anything else you want to say before we get out of here, Trevor Beggs? Uh, just quickly shout out to Travis Green back in a head coaching role after the Devils fired Lindy Ruff. So uh, after a couple year hiatus, he's back as a head coach. And uh, for cares? tonight, I don't think I don't see the Canucks. Ah, 
Come on, man. Who cares, I, I, man? My first game, my first game in the booth, uh, covering the Canucks as a as a media member was Green's yeah. last game. So Whoa. I screwed him over and intent uh, unintentionally, and now he's back. He made it. So I, I had that on my I, on my conscience for a while. Um, wow. And aside from that, yeah, crazy times. Wow, uh, aside from dude. that, and Boudreaux and Boudreaux. Yeah, I was there for Boudreaux's last game too. Yeah, dude, it's funny, man. Part, part time begs he's been there for some big moments. But you're, uh, you're, I always say you're the darkest guy in the city, man. I always say that, man. Begsy is one of those guys, man. You got to be safe when the, you got to, you, honestly, every time I hang out with Trevor, I pray just for, you know, just to like <laughs> ease it up, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. But hey, my, my first game when Green got fired, Betty also got fired. So I look at that as more oh, of a, a light and a dark thing. Oh, so. Trevor! Let's, let's Trevor be real, let's man. Go, let's be dude. real. Okay, Come okay. On. Sign us out, man. You're uh, killing it, man. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, I don't, I don't see the Canucks losing to the Kings twice in a row. I mean, you know, ho- hopefully no. I'm not Please wrong no. because, you know, they've, uh, you know, let's say, even after beating the Ducks, they've lost six of eight. But this Canucks team, you know, if they want to be a contender, don't lose to a division rival twice Bro, within a week's span. Beat the come Kings on, on home ice. I think the Canucks are going to win tonight. Uh, I'm going to call it. I think they're going to get five goals tonight. Uh, I'm going to take the five. <laughs> Five three win over the LA Kings tonight, dude. Okay, I wrote th- I wrote about this in the game day thread. Okay, I said I said the Canucks are gonna win seven nothing, and Elias Lindholm is gonna score eight goals. Uh, that tells you how much I want from Elias Lindholm today. Anyways, Begsy, sign us out, please. All right, all right. Shout out to the everydayers, occasional listeners, first time listeners, new subscribers, and those of you who joined us here on the live show on YouTube, and especially hey, those of you who also joined the Discord as well. Hey, we love each and every one of you, yes, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. Um, coming up this week again, come on, more trade talk. I do want to talk a bit more in depth about Tyler to fully if he, if he isn't dealt and his fit on the Canucks, Patterson likes him. He might be, um, a guy who cost wise would be more realistic for the Canucks, mm-hmm. but we're going to mm-hmm. talk to more trades up this week. Maybe do a bit more of a deep dive on other trade targets that we haven't touched on already. Let's have fun with the trade deadline week, baby, but we got to go. So for now I'm Trevor Beggs. That guy's Cal Bowen and you've been listening. Oh, his mic cut off. I think he was just saying, you've been listening to me talking a lot of BS. My name's Kyle Bowen, and that was Locked on Canucks. Your Locked on Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network.